Hello, this is John Spielman with my video version of my latest column, chess-based column for the 3rd of September, which I have entitled, what have I entitled it? Uh, Violence and Subtlety in Dusseldorf and Beyond. Probably in Dusseldorf and Beyond, maybe, should be in brackets, I think. Um... So, um, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to call it violence and subtlety. Um, so, what I've got, um, I've got some nice, a couple of nice positions from the recent World Rapid Clay Team Championship in Dusseldorf, which was a wonderful event, really. It had, I don't know if you haven't seen, it had teams of nine, of whom six played in each round. There had to be a woman and they had in the team and also one amateur player rated under 2,000. And um, the best team, WR Chess, had, I think, Nipo on, Ian Nipo on the show and board three or four, and Hu Yifan and Costa Nuke as their women, the alternate women. I mean, just ridiculous. Anyway, it was an excellent event, and I've got a couple of... Um, Violent positions and then a very, very nice Sugsfang. And I said in the column a few days ago on Radio 4 on the BBC, which is what I listen to, uh, being a middle-aged codger, um, then um, there was a programme about board games. So they had quite a lot about chess and they also talked about Monopoly. And there was an interview with an Italian guy who's the world Monopoly champion, apparently. And he said... One thing to remember is that in the opening, the prison is your enemy, and in the end game, it's your friend. And the point of this was that being sent to jail <coughs> in a Monopoly game, unless you pay to get bailed, you lose you lose tempi. In the opening, losing tempi is disastrous because uh, you have to go and acquire as much as possible as quickly as possible. But in the end game, you actually don't want to to have a dice a dice throw because you may land up on one of your opponent's delightful hotel complexes, at which point you will have to pay out a great deal of money. And so it's better to be holed up in prison, given that from jail you can still collect rent, as you can in this particular game. Right, so obviously it would be a totally different game if you couldn't. Anyway, so <coughs> Stuxvang is intrinsic to chess, and I have this example and then I pointed out that without Sugsvang king and rook against king would be a draw and I think queen against rook as well because the way you win when you get to the final position is by flushing the enemy rook out and if you can't flush the enemy rook out then I think it's probably a draw actually which is quite something so um and of course there are many many other endings pawn endings anyway so um what else have I said? So I've carried on with those, and I made a study, uh, a proto-study, and then a slightly better version out of the end game between uh, um, Nihal, sorry, Nihal and um, Aronian. Well, let's start, though, with this. You can look away if you don't want to see the solution. It's um, this position... Uh, black to play and win. Black was a, uh, I guess, I don't know how the boards worked, <coughs> but he was playing a 1900 player, under 2000, this grandmaster. And apparently he thought for about a minute and a half. So I suppose what happened is he knew he was winning this position. He must There must be something devastating at this stage. He maybe looked at 94 and thought, oh, that doesn't work. He, um wondered what shall I do and then at some point it dawned that he had a devastating move and I imagine he saw the move he checked it for about 10 seconds it wouldn't take much longer he had probably admired it for about 10 seconds and then he played it and the move is the beautiful queen a3 splat if pawn takes queen bishop takes knight check is obvious the obviously the end of the world I haven't even I'll put in pawn takes queen as a variation, I suppose. New variation, check, rook to there, and take. 
You can take with the bishop as well. Anyway, that's obviously the end of the universe as we speak, quite clearly. And um, so after queen, ta queen takes a3, it went rook takes d7, bishop takes knight check, and he resigned because take back uh, bishop takes knight with check. Bishop takes knight with check, rook d2, and then, well, what's a nice way to win? How would we like to win this position? Uh, oh, I don't know. Bishop takes and, and queen d1 is one way to win. Queen a1, sorry. And the other way to win is to go rook takes, pawn takes, and I don't know. Something devastating. Rook somewhere away, check. That would also work. So, nice finish. Very pretty finish. Quite unusual. Slightly reminiscent of Levitsky Marshall, the famous queen, black queen to g3 game. So then we've got Kramnik against Gukes, which is a game where Kramnik was actually doing quite well. Kramnik was playing for a team called the Chess Pensioners. They were quite dangerous pensioners, I have to say. And in this game with Gukes, he got the advantage, actually. Um, might d7, I don't know, maybe. I suppose if you go rook d8, there's bishop b6. Maybe you can go rook e8, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not thinking very clearly about this. I'm just... So knight takes bishop is interesting because it gives the b-file, but it does um, leave the a6 pawn as a nice target. I imagine if queen b7 or something, maybe e5 is a good move. I don't know. Maybe c4. Good move, actually. So he went d5, takes, 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 queen b5, queen f4. This is very good for white at this moment, but the guy Gukesh managed to fight on. Um, I think b3 actually was a good move as well. And now queen a6 is good, apparently, but queen f1. Anyway, this is what happened. And at some point, something rather ridiculous happened. Um, your man played rookie six. He was still okay, I think. And so it's black to play in this position and win. Um, and this has appeared already, I think, on chess.com, for instance. The thing about all these uh, places where you have um, things black to win or something... The actual move is fairly easy. You can see, I think, knight g3 check, take, take. The solution I saw, which was reprinted on the weekend chess, was bishop g1, which obviously loses to queen h4 check. So it's not even a move worth considering. So I don't really understand how how they could do that. Um, yeah, so if bishop g1, new variation, queen h4 check, obviously. So he went bishop e5, takes, 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 bishop g6. I mean, if bishop f3, I think one thing you can do is just to play, um, yeah, you can just play rook takes pawn, can't you? If rook takes pawn, you have here, which completely finishes the game. Is that true? It is, I think, yeah. That's definitely true. And if bishop takes pawn, just king h8, and I mean, nothing really happens. You have to be very, very, very slightly careful as black in this position. Rook e1, presumably. Well, you can play queen h... No, you can take the bishop then, can't you? Sorry. Let, let's um, not play rook e1, but this obviously is completely winning. Um, so we'll say delete from here. Uh, remaining moves. Okay. So, um, anyway, that was that. And then I uh, I noticed something, which is I put the same position in, but with the white king on g1. And interestingly, in this position, then knight g3 doesn't work. But there's a move that actually, it was the first move I thought of when I saw this, which didn't work in the position with the king on h1. But here the move is queen h3, because if pawn takes queen, bishop h2 check, and... Um, knight g3 mate 
So that's rather splendid that in that position this happens to to work. There's no decent defence. If bishop e5 say, yeah, I mean you can do this. Or if uh, bishop e5, probably best to go check and check like this. And that's completely, complete devastation. So, um, so it's just interesting that by putting the king on g1, and it is uh, an echo of queen a3 in the previous thing. So the most interesting thing, actually, though, in this um, in this um, tournament was, sorry, I'll put, put it here, this game between Nihal and um, Aronian, and we'll play up to the critical position. Most people have played this position. Most people who are experienced have played this position at some point. This is sort of Reti Kappa. Who was it Reti against? Uh, somebody, anyway. I don't know. Queen A1 is the old, old, old recipe. Um, and, okay. 95 is a good move. Now, I don't know. He's got a problem. He played F4, which allowed... Aronian to manage to take on c4 at a slightly annoying moment. I don't know if he could have played h3, so that in that case... The thing is, if he played h3 here, um, then in the game continuation, rook to there, rook to there, take, take. Now you can't take on c4 because I'm going to be able to to do something annoying, but I can probably could maybe go rook a1 and rook e1 or something and be irritating. But 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 takes and c4 is definitely a bad idea, because in that case you can take with the knight twice and keep this bishop on h7, um, keep granite in front of it. So what happened was that they took and went check and took, 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 and sadly you can't go knight to c4 because of knight g4 check. So he had to go pawn takes. This is still a bit a bit dangerous for black because b5 is going to happen. It did. And I think probably with best play it should be okay here. He took. I don't know if he has to. I don't know if he can play c5 in this position. I'm going to ask an engine actually what it thinks of c5. Is that a bad move or a playable move? c5. Rook d2. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit. Rook a8 is possible. Um, it's better. It's better for takes is actually okay. Rook takes. Now it wants to go king f8. In fact, and says it's plus equals. He went g5. H4 is quite clever. R rook c5 given here as well. Take take here. Then this nice move. Bishop f3. Rook back. King e3. Takes and he took with the pawn, which is rather which is interesting. I mean, knight f3 is also possible, of course, which uh, circumscribes the black knight. So now white ends up with an extra pawn, but on the other hand, his h4 pawn is weak. They played these moves and they reached the diagram. I'm going to kill the gonna kill this here, go notation and here. So this is white to play. And Nihal thought for, I think, only about a minute or a minute and a half and found a fantastic sequence. I thought it would probably be knight g4 here, but it's actually c6 take, and then you push again. So the question you have to ask yourself as white is not how can I force something, because you can't actually, but what moves does black have? And he realised that after king e1, black is in a disgusting zugzwang. This doesn't help either way. And the problem is that knight e7 or knight e6, you take any rook moves or king moves, then rook d8 wins. So, absolute disaster. And black went here, takes knight to there, king to there. Very, very fine zugzwang. Really filthy. So I thought this screams out for a study. And my first um, attempt, sorry, control R. So my first attempt at a study was this, um, which is obviously not great. And I had c7, rook f8. If you go to the e-file, then black will be able to do this and this. 
and it should be a draw. That's a little bit painful, but I think it should be a draw. But you go king g1 out of the way, and after h4, you can't get to g2 because of knight e3, check and mate next move, so you go king h1. So that was my stub of a study, just the end of a study, and I was thinking, how can you improve on this? And I spent about a day with it mulling about in my head, and I got eventually something which I put at the end here, and I'll show you now, which is the same thing, and is sound according to the great engine, because what I do, because you have an engine, I don't analyse myself. I have an idea and I put it in and say, oh great one, is this sound? And when it goes ping and says no, I think, all right, how can I? So I eventually got this position. Um, I'd originally not had the, the knight on g2, but then um, bishop d3 would win. Um, so it's the solution. If king takes knight, knight e3 check is a disaster. Pawn equals queen is threatened. And if bishop, bishop, I'm just going to put an engine on, but if bishop d3, um, knight f4, bishop d3, question mark, knight f4, um, knight f4, bishop f1, rook a1, pawn equals queen is forced. Rook takes, pawn to there is forced, take it, and you're winning. So you start with pawn equal, and you can't go king f, king takes g2, sorry, king takes g2, question mark, ninety three check. So the only thing you can actually do is to play pawn equals queen. You can have a rook as well, but so what, take. Now, if bishop b6, then you have to take the knight next, and then knight, uh, there'll be knight to f4 takes bishop. So you take knight e3 check. There is knight b6, but it's not terribly serious. Knight b6 um, check here. Here is winning very easily, actually. Rook to there, say. King back, knight to there, rook b8, and that's the end of that, really. I don't know if knight a8, you can just leave it. You can play c7, actually, because the rook and the opposite bishop do win against, with another pawn against a rook. That would be a little bit of work. Anyway, so after a8 equals queen takes, king takes, check here, here, we get the position we want. And at least we've had a little bit of an intro. So I'm pl reasonably pleased with that. I think probably it's not going to be easy to get much more of an intro than that, I would think. Because I mean, what 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 was Black's last move? Um, it, there's nothing very obvious it could be because the pawns in the seventh. It could have taken something on f2 maybe, but I mean, do you really want that? Do you really want to have pawn takes bishop or something as your move? Um, maybe you could have sort of pawns in g3 and f2. Bishop and c5, and you have to start with. But then, can you start with pawn equals queen and then bishop f2? Who knows? Uh, this is a reasonably clean version, anyway. So I, I'm reasonably happy with that. But if any, again, if anybody can provide a better nose for that or a better introduction for that, then please, please feel free to contact me, and I, I'd love to have something a bit better. I assume that there must be people must have done studies with this sort of language before. Uh, the person who could tell me that probably is John Nunn, actually. I haven't asked him. Uh, anyway, this, this is a soundish version. It's not terrible. So then I started thinking about studies which have Zugzwang in them. And the first is this rank study, replay training. This took me a while, actually. Um, it's white to play and win. Obviously, you have to start with b3 check, because queen b5 is on. And then, I don't know, I looked at all sorts of things. But actually, the solution... See if you can see it. I mean, I, I found this really quite hard. I think I saw it eventually. But it took quite a while to realise, or maybe even I didn't. Because I was trying to go knight f6 or something, and there's... Knight f6, there'll be queen d2, queen g2. There's nowhere else, I think. Yeah, knight f6. 
new variation. Sorry, you can see the right move. Question mark. Then uh, is Queen D3 or no Queen D3? Maybe Queen D3 is possible as well. I don't know actually. But certainly Queen G2 completely refutes this. Uh, I don't know if Queen D3 does as well. I'm looking. Um, Queen D3, Knight D7 check, King, e, King back. Maybe that worked. King D5. Maybe that works as well. Anyway, the solution is Rook H5 here, and then the glorious move, Knight G5, and it turns out that Black is in complete Zugzwang. You can see that if the Queen, well, let's try Queen G8, Knight to there, check to there, Queen. Queen d3 I didn't give actually. Queen d3 I should have given. Queen d3. No, 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 no. Queen d3. New variation. Knight to there, check to there. Using the pin. Um, queen, queen g2. Knight checks to there. And what else do we have? Queen d1. Knight checks to there. Knight checks king to there. Knight to there. And so rather nice, actually, rather a, rather a nice thing. But, but uh, rank studies tend to be, they're nice, but they're quite slight. And this is, this is a little bit more difficult. I don't know. I, I rather like it, actually. Now I've got some studies by the great Leonid Kubel. There were three Kubel brothers at the, I'm not sure, they were born in the 19th century, I think. There are three of them, and I think they all died, sadly, during the siege of Leningrad. And Leonid, I think, was the youngest. He was also a very good problem composer and a brilliant study composer. I've got a book of his by Tim Whitworth. You won't be able to see it, which is 300 of his endgame studies, and I use them all the time when I'm teaching people. So the first, so there are three of them. I was only going to give one, and then I started. I have my database of studies for coaching. I was going through them, and I was thinking, oh, that's nice. So the first one is this. This is white to win. And it goes... So what it is is that you have to um, get to a position where black is in Zugzwang. So you start with bishop a5. Black's only got one move when you look, because if the, if the king moves, there's d4. Then you kick the bishop to go back. And now you need a move to put black into Zugzwang, and the move is this, which is rather nice. So now if you look, black has no moves. King c4 or e4, d3 check. King c5 or e5, d4 check. Bishop f2, bishop b6 check. Slight but nice. When was this? 1928. And that's the first one. Next one is this. This is... This is more of a fantasy thing. Uh, white to play and win. And how does it go? I know how it goes. This is rather wonderful. What White to play and win. See if you can do it, if you didn't see the notation when I was doing it. It's just very, very, very short, but very sweet. Knight to there, beautiful move. King to there, threatening. So now if king g8, there's bishop d2. King up, queen to there, pawn to there. Very nice. Uh, pure fantasy and rather lovely. Um, yep, there we go. And the third one is, he loves stalemate, Kabul, and this is the stalemate one. So this is white to play and draw. And, I mean, given the sort of guy he was, you can guess what the first move is, really, I think. Um, I mean, knight b7 mate is a big threat. There's not going to be anything very splendid. Um, so if knight, f si knight d6, say, then you have knight f6 check takes queen or something. So the solution is... Roll of drums, etc. Um, queen a8 check, 
king takes queen, king takes pawn, threatening pawn equals queen, checkmate, knights to there, pawn equals queen, getting the knight out of the way, king to there, threatening mate with knight c7, knight e6, a5, black to move, only one move not to lose, but it's stalemate, rather a beautiful Zugzwang, again a fantasy, and I really rather like this as well. This I did manage to solve myself, actually. I've got this book and I have this problem that quite often I think, oh, I could solve this. And because the solutions are right next to them, it's hard not to. This one I did because, you know, it's just sort of, you follow your nose and do your stuff. Right, so more Zugzwang. So the next thing is the great, the immortal Zugzwang game, which I, I don't think I've had, actually, in Agony Columns. Um, the famous game Zamish against Nimzovich. I've done some fairly uh, rudimentary notes. Of course, Nibizovic later played Bishop A6. This is just a Queen's Indian. I think you'd probably go knight e4 now at once, because Queen c2 is perhaps possible. Maybe Queen c2, c5, though. Um, and, um, yeah... E4 actually is okay. There's a line like this. But I mean, white has a lot of play for his pawn here. It's a pretty good version. Of course, it's nothing. The game continues. Um, anyway, he didn't. He p And you could even play rookie one first, maybe, to prepare. He played rather pathetically C takes D5, which I've called Wimbley. I do consider it a Wimbley move. And he just didn't do very much. B5, queen b3, knight c6. There is knight takes d5, actually. Knight takes, knight takes, check here. Can play knight f5 if you want to. I'm not sure if you particularly want to here. Um, I don't know why. Why do you not go knight f5? Maybe this queen c5, then, is annoying. I don't know. White's, getting, White's in danger of getting an advantage in that case. Um, anyway, this was given as a line, and I think this is a bit better. There's going to be queen b7 check, which is useful, but still. So he, he took, which is a little bit pathetic, h3. He's not doing anything intelligent. Um, I think knight e4, actually, is a reasonable move here. And you take the bishop, and you might, you're might you okay still. He really played very passively back f5. No, now black's got space. It's a nice position for black. White hasn't got much control anymore. Queen d1, which is supposed to set up a threat, but bishop b5. So if e4 at the moment you can take the rook. He played rook g1. He believed he was threatening e4, but Nimzovich did not. So Nimzovich played bishop d6 saying, do you really want to play e4, mate? And the guy did, which is of course this is what white wants to play. But it's fairly obvious that black gets more than enough for a piece. I think that's sort of a reasonable comment, actually. I mean, you know, you look at the position after after rook takes f2, after takes and rook takes f2, and it's clear. I mean, people screamed about how wonderful this was at the time. But actually, you look at this and it's a foul position. Because black centre is completely safe. Uh, if bishop e3 or something, you can play... Rook takes b2, and I don't know, bishop b3, probably rook e2, actually. I guess bishop b3 would have been a much better move, wouldn't it? It has to be a much better move. Um, I don't know what we're going to do after that. Are we going to... Is there anything absolutely devastating? I don't think I can play bishop g3 check, can I, at the moment? Um, no, of course not. If I go rook e2, rook e1... Can I then play bishop g3 check? I can take an f2 and I get two more pawns, and of course I'm probably winning. Maybe I just have to do that. I'm going to ask its majesty. Um, probably just wants to take him b2, doesn't it? Oh, bishop b2 is even better. Okay, bishop b2. Uh, is that almost trapping this queen? Queen h4, rook f5. Okay, that's pretty foul, isn't it? Queen is very bad. But I mean, I can just go rook takes this. Uh, knight d2. 
have another one a5 or something I've got three pawns black still has no decent moves you can try to bring his knight to c5 but he's losing the house the garden and most of the uh, garden furniture and you know you're going to win with those pawns okay you went queen g5 which is not a great move doubles rooks one thing when you've got a good position when you're a piece down what you don't do is to get excited and to try to play special moves because you don't need to you just play chess so rook a f8 is a move you play king h1 bishop, rook f5 queen e3 bishop d3 Things are getting even worse for white because now he can't move his bishop. He went rook e1. And now the iconic move h6. So you are threatening to go <coughs> rook f3 and trap the queen. But actually, more seriously, white is in complete Sugsvang here. There are no good moves at all. If g4, rook h to f3, bishop takes rook, rook h2 mate. h4 doesn't help at all. You just sit there. Um, and um, if you move the bishop c1 then there's the glorious move bishop takes knight which is a bit caddish but there we are it is a move that wins a piece for absolutely nothing and therefore white resigned and I don't know there is a threat of sorts of rook f3 but actually white isn't Sugsvang and so it's even worse than if you were threatening rook f3 so nice finish and that is the great immortal Sugsvang game as it is called. And then I was looking at a rook ending recently. I was sort of wimbling around in my head and I got to this position and I was thinking, is this winning or not? Uh, I can't remember who it was. It was one of the games from um, Dusseldorf, I think. I, I can't remember. But anyway, I was thinking, is, is Black winning this? Because if you go h5 takes, king takes, rook checks, king back, and give you give some checks, then black is not able to... white has checking distance. And then I asked I asked the table base, and it said, no, you just pass. So we'll do this. If h5 takes, takes, at, at this moment, g4, h6 is really not working. King g5, h7, that's not working. But um, so if king takes, check, check, check here. And you draw. Um, rook to there, presumably. King to, now where do we go? King here, king here. And I think we can just do this, can't we? King there. And there's nothing to be done. Because g4, we just go king h4. And if rook h8, we go rook g4 check. nothing happens so that's just a draw but if you just pass it turns out that black is in white is in Zugzwang because if rook g2 now you can play h5 and and you've not had checking distance and if king h7 you win the pawn or if king if king f7 and you again have no no real chance rook checks king here king to here and simply there and you just win the pass pawn and win easily Nothing to be done in this position. Because, well, what could you do? So, um, so just a nice sub fan that just happened to pop up while I was looking at something else. So I said, I can't actually remember apropos of what it was. Because I tend to sort of, sometimes I have positions going around in my head. And it just, I just got to that and thought, oh, is that a win? Looks like it, but I couldn't see how. And then I asked and it went ping. And I thought, oh, yes, great maestro, of course. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this. So, a little bit of ultraviolence with queens on a3 and h3. 
and then some Zugzwangs and a little study thrown in. So the next one presumably will be on the 17th, won't it? That seem plausible in a fortnight on the 17th. Hope you've enjoyed this. Just going to check we are recording, otherwise I will scream as usual. And we are recording, and I'm going to stop now. Cheers then. Bye.